I am Dr. Nalnikan. In this second session of Neonatal Transport, today we are going to discuss about three main objectives. To get the best possible way in neonatal transport, the most important part is before initiating transport, how to stabilize the baby. So we'll talk about pre-transport stabilization and the process of actual transport, how to do it and what are the quality markers and how to do it the best possible way. And third objective will be reverse transport. I'll come to that later. After stabilization of the baby in a tertiary level hospital, we have to send back to the community health centers or the small hospitals that will cover in the reverse transport. So coming to the pre-transport stabilization, which is very, very important because transport goal should not be just transferring a baby or infant from one facility to other facility. It should be done in the best possible way to get the best possible outcome. So all goal of our all neonatal transport should be transport of a well-stabilized infant. So to achieve that, we may follow any of the protocol, but here I am going to suggest when we are accepting a transport, let's follow the mnemonics of ACCEPT for the pre-transport stabilization. So what are the components of ACCEPT? ACCEPT is A for assessment, C for control, C for communication, E for evolution, P for preparedness and pre-departure checklist and T for the actual transport. So how to achieve it? Let's come to one on components. A for assessment. So before initiation of the transport, when we are speaking to the referring doctor or the referring facilities, we should clearly assess the situation. What's the problem? If RDS, respiratory distress, how severe it is? What are the equipments required? If it is a hypertension, how severe it is? How the fluid management will do? What anotropes required? What lines required? Those we should know before initiation of the treatment. So what management is needed now before transport, we will clearly will have idea. Then coming to the control. As per the NRP, NRP guideline, you will see in different sickness baby, if extreme preterm baby and antenatal risk factor baby, they propose to go for more skilled person like that in a transport to take the control. We to delegate the team leader role should be given, team leader and other members role should be delegated before the transport to take the complete control of the situation. And next C will be the communication. Communication is key to achieve everything right in the right time, right patient, right transport to achieve that communication is the key. So communication, whom to do the communication, the parents and family, we should speak before initiation of transport. We should discuss with our colleagues who is referring in the referring hospital and at the referral hospital who is going to treat, both the people should discuss before initiation of transport and everything, whatever the before transport initiation should be documented and we should follow a protocol for this communication also. So we can follow a simple mnemonics is bar. Is bar, what are the components of the communication? First, we have to identify ourselves, who we are, who I am, when I am speaking to somebody, who we are as a team when we are speaking to somebody, we have to identify ourselves. Then we should talk about the situation, what we are going to deal in the transport and the background assessment because all the facilities when we are going to get the babies may not be similar. It may be foam, it may be SNCU, it may be lever room, it may be investigation facilities. So we should check the background and assessment of the baby. As I clinically discussed, clinical assessment is primarily important. After assessing everything, once documentation is ready, we should read back our information. So this is the ISBAR, we can communicate to achieve everything right. Then after the communication over, evolution we should do, is the transport appropriate? Because very, very sick babies, when we are anticipating, they can die within minutes before the transport. Is the baby suitable for transport? Or the babies when require a very advanced treatment, advanced surgery, but the facility is not available at receiving hospital, should we transfer to that facility? To assess that, we should know if the transfer, transfer is appropriate. The evolution. And after the evolution, before initiation of the proper transport, our preparation, packaging, and pre-departure check should be perfectly right. And to do that, we should get our check, equipment checklist should be ready, our medication should be ready. I will come to that later. But what we should do here, we should follow a protocol. So pre-transport stabilization, few protocols common, very popular protocols are available like stable, safer, stops, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If stops, I will come stops is sensorium, temperature, oxygenation, airway breathing both includes here in oxygenation and perfusion and sugar, the stops. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, very simple. A for airway, B for breathing, C for circulation, D for drugs, E for environment, surrounding, F for family and G for guidance, the emotional guidance to the family. But to make it simple, we can follow the basic things. So before initiation of the transport, we should address the airway, breathing, circulation, stabilization is very, very key. 
and to do achieve that along with other things we can follow stable protocol s for sugar t for temperature a for artificial breathing and b for blood pressure l for laboratory like blood investigations blood grouping sugar minimum test if anything available we should do that and carry the information with us and the emotional support and when you are changing from baby from one facility to other facility the family moves to another facilities that may be new facilities to new uh, facilities to the family so the emotional support during the sickness period is very very important key step and for neonatal transport the why stabilization is important unlike road traffic accident here no place for soup and scoop we should wait we should stabilize and to get the best possible treatment during transport and optimize the care we should plan it properly then we know the majority babies who dies during transport or after transport they require respiratory support during transport 70 to 80% babies 55 to 70% babies who dies later develop hypothermia during transport so very very key components to achieve this outcome and 35% babies who dies later usually require circulatory support so the major determinants of mortality during transport this all three things should be taken care so what should be our target we should achieve those things but how to achieve many modes of transports are there i'm not going into detail those transport modes but one first sharing a common information if you don't have private transport system 108 emergency service number available across many states of india calling that facilities the vehicle transport vehicle the ambulance can reach to the referring hospital or the place and can transport between the facilities and during our transport to achieve the optimum outcome the monitor monitors are important the pulse oximetry sometimes though give its oxygenation pulse information and due to the artifacts of movements it may not give us the right information so we should see when we are giving a respiratory support we should the chest movement is properly is right the chest movement is happening and if the et tube is there properly secured and if preferably if ecg monitor is that get to heart rate it is better so these are things should be available in respiratory care whenever required cpap either dedicated cpap or ventilation cpap or a neopuff tp resuscitator resist- should be available during the transport to achieve the respiratory support so these are all things which should optimize in the medications also the primary medications basic medications should be with us when we are transferring a baby the iv dextrose normal saline inotropes like dopamine dobutamine adrenaline this should be available anti seizure medications including midazolam for sedation should be available when we are transferring the baby and when extreme preterm babies we are transferring during the ventilation if you feel surfactant required we should carry surfactant and the critical congenital heart disease babies we should always carry prostaglandin e1 along with us to start whenever the transport starts so these are the basic medications should be ready and to we should maintain the sugar temperature breathing blood pressure support if laboratory required and the emotional support is primary this all should we should achieve but we should remember that among these all the things the temperature case is very very important in the small babies and vlw baby very low birth weight babies because each degree temperature low hypothermia can increase 28% mortality as we know in the very low birth weight babies so it's very very important to monitor the temperature by a thermometer during our transport and achieving the trans the temperature care by the best possible way incubator facilities if available otherwise embrace a mortal thermal mattress is available that we can apply if that's not available at least by covering the baby with a polythene wrap covering the head which constitute 25 to 30% body surface with a cap and kangaroo skin care with mother or father the very important small simple steps we can achieve at least to reduce the hypothermia when we are talking about hypothermia we should achieve sometimes the cooling also by passive cooling or active cooling by mira cradle if possible during transport if we are treating a hypoxic ischemic can cephalopathy baby during the transport so we know the time and the team is very important to achieve the best possible outcome but during the transport we should see that baby is stabilized or restriction should be sometimes men should maintain the best ones we should prevent and the transport proper during the transport our target should be keeping the baby warm by reducing hypothermia keeping the baby pink whenever the baby is pale or cyanotic we should assess the perfusion we should access the oxygenation of the baby we should give either oxygen or respiratory support to keep the baby pink and we should not forget to be- keep the baby sweet so baby from labor room snu or from the home whenever baby comes at least these two things to be taken care of feeding so we should not forget so by feeding the mother milk we can initiate breastfeeding we can express breastfeeding we can give or there is a feeding difficulty you can put a anaerobic tube some sort of feeding like express breast milk we can give 
or if required eye fluid you have to give to re pre prevent hy hypoglycemia these are key things when transferring of the baby so skin to skin contact and contact and feeding during transport should be done any stable unstable babies we should take care but here very very important when we are transferring the baby during the transport to optimize the care we should reduce the adverse events so our response times should be right and we should prevent unintended intended hypoglycemia hypothermia or dislodgement any of the instruments or requirement of cpr should be minimal air leak we should reduce during the transport and we should take care the transport related injury should not happen to the babies or the staffs so that we can optimize our transport in the best possible way and the baby deteriorates in the way like the during the respiratory support or the baby deteriorates in the ventilator time in the unit unit and issues we should remember to check for dope dope pneumonics we should check it and we should find out what's the reason of deterioration and after the baby transport over when we are getting the baby once stabilized we should not forget because of the bad capacity of the tertiary level care facilities are limited if the baby once stabilized once received the definitive treatment like surgery surgery pediatric ligation at the tertiary level hospital we should send back the baby on uh, to the referring hospital or the birthing hospital which will decrease the cost of care it will achieve the proximity of the baby to the mother of the family and sometimes the appropriate distribution of the resources can happen if we are taking care of the reverse transport so with this probably our target should be common things to achieve like temperature care respiratory support prevention of hypothermia and hypoglycemia and achieving the circulatory care with that probably you can achieve the best possible with the neonatal transport thank you